Okay, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to have you guys do a little bit of warm-up here based on what we did yesterday. Let's go to the marbles here. Okay. So I'm going to continue with our lecture. And this is going to be, really, we're going to use the complement rule. For probability, and here we go. Select a marble at random. What's the probability of selecting? So we're going to warm up, okay? We're going to talk about really what the complement rule is. I'm going to say, what's probably selecting question number one, a non-red marble? Question two, a non-green marble? Question three, a non-orange what marble? Okay, so I'm going to give you guys a few minutes to do this. Let's get out our clock here, okay? I'm going to start that, and we'll see how you guys do. I'm going to go back over here, and let's see what happens here. Okay, this is a warm-up here.
Let me give you guys a few more minutes, okay? Be right back. Did the alarm go off? No. Okay. What do you guys know about these questions? There's, where's our alarm? Still got some time. All right. Sorry about that. I'll give you guys some time. I just want to point something out, though. I'm highlighting that word. Let's see what you guys think. This is the complement rule for what? Probability. Is that true? Now, we don't know what the complement rule for probability actually is yet, but we will by the end of the day. What are they asking you guys in these questions here, by the way? Do you guys know? What's the probability of selecting a non-what? A non-red marble. Okay, so I'm going to write it down. Probability of a non-what? Red marble. That's the number of what? 
non-red marbles out of the what? Out of the total. Okay? All right, you guys with me on that? So you have to understand the meaning of non-red. Okay, let me, let me express that to you guys. What does it mean to not be what? Not be red. You are any color but what? Red. Is that true? Isn't that what non-red means? Okay. So, let's see. What does that mean? Four plus three plus two plus one out of how many marbles? Eighteen. Okay, because there's... Because green is not red. Is that true? So I want to remark is that all of these marbles here are non-what? They're not red. Green's not red. Blue's not red. Yellow's not red. Orange is not red. Is that true? So how many marbles are not red? What's 4 plus 3 plus 2? 9 and then plus 1 is 10. Is that right? So there's 10 marbles that are not red. Out of how many marbles? 10 out of 18, what does that reduce to? Five ninths. Five ninths. All right, you guys okay with that? Is that easy peasy? What do you guys think? Easy peasy lemon squeezy, five ninths? Okay. What's the next question? You got to be non, non what? Non green. Do you know what marbles are not green? Right? This is not red, the first question. Not green, not orange. Which marbles are not red? I'm sorry, not green. Question number two. Probability selected a non green marble is what? The number of non green marbles out of the total. So go back to the bag. How many marbles are not green? Do you guys know? What's the deal? Four marbles are green. Is that true? So how many are not green? You're going to have to count what? Eight, three, two, and one. Is that true? Because those marbles are not green. So what's 8 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1? 14. Good. So this is going to become what? 14 out of 18. What does that reduce to? 7 ninths. Okay. That's number 2. What do you guys think? Non-green? green Non-orange now, number three, non-orange. Probability to select a non-orange marble is really the number of non-orange marbles out of the what? Total. Non-what? Orange. So... What does it mean to be a non-orange marble? Here's one, one marble's orange. How many marbles are not orange? The eight red, the what? The four green, the three blue, the two yellow. How many marbles are not orange? 17. So this is going to be what? 17 out of what? 18. Okay, you guys okay with that? So it's 17 out of 18 what marbles? They are not orange. What do you guys think? Do you know the meaning of non? Yes. Now, you, I, I'm going to say to you guys, today's lecture is on the complement rule for probability. So I have to give you 
the definition of the complement of an event, and you actually were just looking at it. The complement of event E. E prime. What does that actually mean? Right? This is what? Non-E or E with that line there. Okay? This is this is what I'm saying here. Okay? I use this notation here. Let me do this. Um, sorry. This is what I use. The non-E. I use the language. But all of this is describing the complement of an event. Now, this is the complement, okay? This is the set of outcomes that are not in your event E, but are in the what? Sample space S. This is the definition of what we say the complement of an event. Now, how do you guys want to remember this? It's the outcomes that are not what? In E, but are in what? S. These things are not in what? E. Okay? So what you guys were looking at with these examples, they're all complements of like events. Like if you say non-red, that's the complement of selecting red. Non-green, that's the complement of selecting green. Non-orange, it's the complement of selecting orange because they're the outcomes that are not that color. Does that make sense? Okay, so if I say to you, hey, what's the complement of being hungry? Not hungry. Good. What's the complement of up? No. Not up. Good. What's the complement? Like if I said to you, Mr. Judge is not a Republican. What does that mean to not be a Republican? Well, if I tell you I'm not a Republican, then what could I be? Anything else. Anything else. Good. So be careful. The complement of up is not up. Don't say down. It's not that simple. I should take that back. It's actually simpler than that. Just not up. Sideways is not up. You see what I'm saying? So if I say, what's the complement of up? Mm. Not up. Sideways, down. What's the complement of being a Republican? It's a non-Republican. But what does that mean? You're a Democrat. You're a Libertarian. You're peace and freedom, you're independent, is that true? You're socialist, you're communist, you're a Green Party, are there any others? Libertarian? Libertarian? I think so. Do you guys see the point? Yeah. So what's the complement of blue in this case? Red, green, or yellow, is that right? What's the complement of yellow? Orange. I'm sorry. Yeah, I forgot. What, what did I say? The first one, complement of, of blue? It's going to be what? Red green. Red, green, yellow, or orange. Okay. What's the complement now of orange? Red, green, blue, or what? Yellow. It's all the col colors that are not here, but they're still in the what? Sample, sample space. You guys okay with that? 
So, I mean, that's what we mean by the complement of an event. The outcomes that are not in the event, but they're still in the sample space. Okay, they're still in the context of the question. Now, let me give you guys a nice rule that you guys are going to use, okay? Because it makes everything a lot easier, believe it or not. I'm going to start with the universe again. Here's my event E. Okay? So everything here in blue are outcomes in E. You guys okay with that? But what about out here? I'm going to color this maybe green. What would you say about these outcomes here? Are they in E? Say no, they're what? They're not in what? E. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. See what I'm saying? Okay. I'm gonna count this is all this is in my sample space. So here's a counting principle. If I count everything that's in what? E and add everything that's not in what? E. You know what that equals? Everything in the what? Sample space. Let's say that again. Count everything in E. Count everything that's in the complement, not in E. Doesn't that give you the total in the sample space? Yes. Yep. All right, now I'm going to use a little bit of algebra. I'm going to divide both sides by what? N of S. On the left side, you get what? N of E over N of S. N of non-E over what? N of S. What's N of S over N of S? It's 1. What do you get now? N of E over N of S. P of E plus P of non-E equals what? 1. This is by definition. So, ladies and gentlemen, you see here, really, this is what we call the complement rule. For probability. Okay, the complement rule for probability. P of E plus P of non-E equals 1. That's the complement rule. So now, here's what I'm going to say to you guys. This is what's going to be important here. Okay, you guys okay with that? Here we go. Complement rule for probability. Um, you might say, okay, that's fine, 
But what do you use to answer questions? Well, you're going to use the following version here. The probability of non-E is 1 minus the probability of E. How do we know this? Do you guys know? If I subtract using algebra P of E from both sides here, don't I get cancellation here of P of E? And you're left now on the left side P of non-E? Yeah. Okay, you guys see what I'm saying? There we go. You're going to do something here. Okay, here we go. This is what we're going to use, ladies and gentlemen. And you're going to use this when you have the probability of the complement of an event. This is the rule that you're going to use. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, this is the complement rule. Okay, so let's verify this. You say, what do you mean? Remember this bag of marbles? And they say, what's the probability of selecting non-red? We're going to do that again, but this time we're going to use the complement rule. Okay? So question one, the chance of selecting a non-red marble is going to be found by taking one minus the probability of selecting what? red okay the work you do is on the right hand side here okay now how do you answer this question you have to know what's the probability of selecting a what a red marble so go to the bag and tell me out of the 18 marbles how many are red? How many are red out of the 18 marbles? Eight. Isn't there eight red marbles? Okay. Okay. So here's what's going to happen. You're going to now have to do some arithmetic here. You're going to multiply the top by what? 18 and the bottom by 18. Because isn't 18 over 18 1? Or you actually can replace it that way. 18 over 18 with 1. Isn't that 1? Why did I do this? Do you guys know? Yeah, when you actually have, remember this, this is A over C, bless you, minus B over C. If you're going to subtract fractions, they have to be like. They have to have the same denominator. So what does that mean? 
That's A over B minus C. This is the algebra. Okay, you guys okay with that? So in this case now, here's my work. 18 minus 8 over 18. What does that give you? Isn't that 10 over 18? Yes. Doesn't that reduce to 5 over 9? Because 2 goes into 10 5 times. 2 goes into 18 9 times. Isn't that 5 nines? So ladies and gentlemen, is that what you got earlier? 5 nines? Yes, it is. That's exactly what you guys got earlier. So, ladies and gentlemen, you may not think this is a shortcut, but it is. You're going to see, I'm going to change the example on you, and we're going to use this here. So, this is some pretty good stuff. What was the next question? Number two. Probably selecting a non what? Is it non green? Okay, how do you guys use this complement rule? Okay, here's what you guys do. One minus the probability of selecting a what? A green marble, okay? So non what? Green. One minus the probability of selecting a green marble. What's the probability of selecting a green marble? Go to the bag. How many green marbles are there? Aren't they four green marbles? Okay, so what's that going to be now? That's what? Four out of what? What do you replace the one with? 18 over 18. 18 minus 4 over 18. What's that going to be? That's 14 over 18. 2 goes into 14 seven times. 2 goes into 18 nine times. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, there we go. There you go, number two. Was that the answer that we got before? Say yes. You guys okay with this one? Yeah, that was the answer we got before. Good. All right. I wish I had the applause, okay? We're now going to check the probability of selecting a non-what? Orange marble. Non-orange. Excuse me? Number yeah, number three. Sorry. Good job. What's the probability of selecting an orange marble, ladies and gentlemen? How many marbles are orange here? One, One out of how many? 18. So this is the complement rule. You guys okay with that? So, okay, 1 out of 18. What do you replace this 1 with? 18 over 18. What's 18 minus 1? This is going to be 17 over 18. Okay? So, ladies and gentlemen, was that what we got earlier today? By using the definition? Okay? Okay. That sure was. So let me remark to you guys, this is going to be your weapon of choice. Okay? Because now I'm going to go back to what? The standard deck. Okay? We're going to ask you complement rule questions for the standard deck. Let's see if you guys learned anything. Okay? So I'm going to say here, you have again the what? Standard deck. Again, 
they're going to say this. You're going to select, you select a card at random. What's the probability of selecting question one, a non-ace? Question two, a non-spade? Question three, a non-ace of spades? Question four, a non-red card. <clears throat> Question five. Um, okay, we'll say a non-red ace. So by now, you guys should have this picture in your notes. Is that right? And then now, they're asking you again probability questions. You say, how do I know, because it says it, what's the probability, how many cards are you selecting again? A, what does that mean? One. One. And what's this word? Non-ace, non-spade, non-ace of spades, non-red card, non-red aces here. Okay, you guys okay with that? So let's give you guys some time. What's the time? We're going to try the lucky number eight. Okay. Give you guys eight minutes. See what you guys can do with this.
Should I give you more time? Yes. Okay. I'll give you guys more time. Take a look.
Oh, ladies and gentlemen. All right, we're gonna use what? What's this called? The complement rule for probability, is that right? Okay, you guys understand what we're saying? We're gonna use this here. So for the first question, they're asking for the probability of selecting a what? Non-ace. Non what does that phrase mean? What's the chance of selecting a card that is not an ace, right? The complement rule says that is one minus the probability. Here's the, here's the question. A non-ace? One minus the probability of selecting an ace. Is that true? Now, by now, you guys might have memorized that deck, and by now, you know how many cards are aces? Four out of 52. Here's my point. You determine this probability. Is that right? But don't you have to, sub you're going to have to subtract that fraction from the number one. What do we replace this one with? Yes, you see this denominator? You're going to replace that with what? 52 over 52. Why? What's 52 divided by 52? Isn't that 1? 52 minus 4 over 52. What does that equal? That's 48 out of 52. How does that reduce? 2 goes into 48 24 times. 2 goes into 52 26 times. 2 goes into 24 how many times? And 2 goes into 26 what? 13 times. Here you go, ladies and gentlemen. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Great. Okay, so this is how you answer the question using the complement what mm -hmm. rule, okay? This is the rule you use for a non-event. All right, what about number two, a non-spade? Did you guys get that one? Let's see. Probability is selecting a non-what? Spade, what does that equal? One minus the probability of selecting a what? Spade, okay? You're going to use that complement rule. So go back to the deck. Where are the spades? Down here. How many cards are spades? Okay, so what are you guys going to say? This fraction is 13 out of what? 52. What do I replace this number one with? 52 over 52. So this is 52 minus 13 over 52. And what does that equal? What is that? 39 out of 52. What does that reduce to? Three-fourths. Okay, because 13 goes into 39 three times and 13 goes into 52 four times. So ladies and gentlemen, like I said, the complement rule is designed to help you, not what? Not hurt you. Okay, you guys okay with that? Am I using the complement rule the way we described? Okay, what's number three? A non-ace of spades? Okay. So what does the complement rule say about this? This is what? One minus the probability of selecting an ace of what? Spade. Non what? Ace of spades. One minus the probability of selecting an ace of spades. What's the chance of selecting an ace of spades? Where is your ace of spades anyway? Well, it's a card that's both a what? 
It's both an ace and a what? Spade. What is that card known as? The ace of spades. How many ace of spades are there? One out of what? It's one out of 52. So you're going to replace this one with what? 52 over 52. So that equals 52 minus 1 over 52. And what does that equal? 51 over 52. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right. A non-red card? Do you guys know how to do that? Number four, probability of selecting a non what? What does that equal? Do you guys happen to know how many cards are red? Is that 26 out of 52? Right? So you say, what do you mean? Well, half the deck is red, isn't it? Right, 13 and 13, does that give you 26? Okay. That one, you're gonna replace with what? 26 out of 26, what does that equal? I'm sorry, 52 out of 52. Okay. You say, why 52 out of 52? Because if you're gonna subtract fractions, what do you need again? Same denominator. 52 minus 26 out of 52. What's 52 minus 26? 26 out of 52 becomes what? It'll be, it will be 13 over what? Oops. Remember, do that division by two. Two goes into 26, 13 times. Two goes into 52, 26 times. And then 13 goes into 13 once, and 13 goes into 26 twice. And sure enough, ladies and gentlemen, what do we know? Half the deck is not what? Not red. If you're not red, what does that mean? Not being red, that means you're a what? Black card. Is that true? Half the deck is not red, or half the deck is what? Black. You guys see what I'm saying? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. The compliment rule. What's the next question on the compliment rule? A non-red ace. Okay. Probability you select a non Red ace. I'll say RA for red ace. That's one minus the probability of selecting a red what? Ace. Okay, so we're gonna have to know this question. And this question's in our in our notes, by the way. Okay? Right? So remember. Complement what? Rule. So where are the red aces? Ace of hearts, ace of what? Diamonds. Are those the red aces? Well, the other two are black, aren't they? Okay, so how many red aces are in the deck? Two. How many cards? Okay, so I'm going to say what now? Two out of what? 52. What do I replace the 1 with? 52 over 52. Why, ladies and gentlemen? So you can have the same denominator and you could subtract the what? Numerators. What's 52 minus 2? 2 goes into 50 25 times and 2 goes into 52 what? 26 times. Ladies and gentlemen, there you go. 
Easy peasy what? Lemon squeezy. This is the complement rule for probability. Okay, you guys okay with that? And let me, let me give you some more examples here so you guys can kind of understand, you know, a little bit more how this may work. I'm going to say you have a bin of iPhones. Okay? What is a bin, by the way? It's a container. Is that true? Okay. I'm going to say you have a bin of 500 iPhones. In which 25 are defective. Okay? If you select an iPhone at random, okay, what's the probability, question one, it's defective, question two, it's not what, defective. All right, you guys okay with that? This kind of, if you said to me, Mr. Judge, this kind of looks like my homework questions. Is that right? You guys know what I'm saying? In Canvas, don't you have your homework? Homework two. So this is kind of like homework questions. You're going to have to use your, your definition of probability. So for question one, we know they're asking a probability question. Is that right? Say yes. Good. They're asking, what's the probability that you have a what? Defective. Because you're selecting what? An iPhone. What does an and a mean? One, okay. So by definition, the probability an iPhone is defected, defective. We need to know how many are defective out of the what total. Is that right? How many iPhones are defective? 25 or what? Defective, is that true? So we're going to put 25 out of, do you guys know how many iPhones are in the bin? 500. 500? Okay. So this is 25 out of what? 500. You guys okay with that? Bless you. Okay, what do you guys think? You guys know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? You're using your definition now. Punch this in your calculator. So I, pro I apologize here. 25 divided by 500. What does that give you? I know you can't see it. But this is TI-84, in case you guys didn't know. It's one of the recommended free, free what? Calculators you guys can use on your phone, whatever, right? What's that number? Can you guys see? 0 0.05, good. Some of you guys can probably see it. Now, that's exact, isn't it? So this is the probability that you select a defective iPhone. You know what that means? If I move the decimal two spaces to the right, that means 5% of your iPhones are what? Defective. What do you guys think? Is that okay? Yeah. Man, this is, isn't this amazing? Question two. What is question two asking? Yeah, I'm going to see what here. 
not defective. If you ever see the phrase not or non, like in question two, what do you guys want to use? I wish I had my sound effects. Do, do, do. What are you going to use? I'm sorry. You're going to have to hum and sing. Just don't ask me to dance. Don't ask me to sing. Don't ask me to dance. If it says not defective, what do you guys do? That's the probability of selecting an iPhone. That is what? Not defective. What is that? One minus the probability of being defective. Do you happen to know the probability of being defective? Do you happen to know that? Say yes. What is that? Did you just find that as 0 0.05, which is 5%? Do you guys know what 1 minus 0 0.05 is? A dollar minus a nickel? I don't even have to use my calculator for this, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to show off. Isn't that 95, isn't that 95 cents? 0.95? Okay. That's the probability of what? Not being defective. What is this? 95 what percent? You guys okay with that one? There it is. Easy peasy, lemon what? Squeezy. So, you know, when you look at the website, you say, what am I talking about? Let me see if I can find it here. Oh, sorry. You guys aren't intrigued yet. Oh, how do we get out of here? We want to go to 227. What I did, in case you guys didn't know, what's in Canvas for you it says statistics lecture number what? Five here. And I intend for you guys to be able to do some of these kind of questions here. Okay? But what I have to also give you from statistics lecture five is notice, um, and actually I'm going to put part of statistics lecture six as well. We're not finished with six. We'll be doing five and six. Um, so I'll put that as well in Canvas for you guys. But... I'm going to also talk about here a definition here called odds, okay? Odds for an event, and I'm going to give you guys that definition because once you know about the complement rule, you can actually look at odds for. Now, if I said to you, odds in general, if it came up at, at the next cocktail party you guys go to, Odds is also a measure of what? Of chance. Okay? Odds are a measure of chance. Specifically, we have the definition of odds for an event E. I'll just say odds for E. E is an event. And this is a ratio, ladies and gentlemen. This is a ratio. Odds for is defined this way. It's the number of outcomes in an event to the number of outcomes that are not in the what? Event. You guys see this colon right here? You know what that means? That's the word what? Two. So you have odds for an event. You got odds for the non-event. And this colon means what? Two. So if I said to you guys, go back to the black bag of marbles here.
just to start you guys off in case you said, oh, I'm going to start working on all that homework. I'm going to update and canvas for you guys. I would do it in front of you with my laptop, but I can't because I don't have my laptop still. All right. Okay, I'm going to ask you guys, you're going to select a marble at random. What's the odds for selecting a question one, a red marble? Okay, we're going to keep it simple. Odds for selecting a red marble. You're going to need to use the definition. You say, what's the definition? Can you guys read that? The number of what? The number of red marbles to the number of non-red marbles. Okay? Okay. It's the number of red to the number of non-what? Red. This is your definition of the odds for an event. So you're counting again. Right? You say, what am I counting? How many marbles are red in the bag? I'm not, you're not even counting. Somebody counted them for you. You're just using the definition. So how many marbles are red? Eight. Eight. Put the colon, because that means the word two. And then you need to know how many are what? Not red. not red. So how many marbles are not red? We've come full circle. Ten. Ten. Good. So this ratio, eight to what? Ten. You say, what does that mean? It means there's eight red marbles to this this is a symbol for the word two, to what? Non. Ten non-red, okay? This is thought of as being the number of what? Successes to the number of non-successes, which is really failures. Okay, so if you ever go to Vegas, they work and they communicate in terms of the language of odds, they never say probability. So gambling, the language is in terms of odds. But, you know, odds are very useful as well. So you might say, Mr. Judge, there's eight what? Successes, yes, to ten what? Failures. Does that mean anything to you? Eight successes to ten failures? I hope it does. <clears throat> However, here's what I want you guys to do. If you guys remember odds, okay, eight to ten, we can actually simplify odds. You know, you can divide those two numbers by any number you want. But instead of simplifying, I'm going to unitize the first number. I want to unitize the successes. Does anybody know what they mean by unitize? Mm -mm. You know what the word unit means in math? One. One. Good. So I'm going to try to make that first number the eight because that's my successes, right? How do I make that eight one? Very simple. You're going to divide it by itself, eight. But if you do that, you know what you have to do? You have to divide both by 8. Okay? Now, what is 8 over 8, by the way? One. That's 1. So now, we unitize the successes. You say, ah, there's 1 success, 2. What's 10 over 8? That's 1 point what? 2, five. Two five. So you have one success to 1.25 non-what? 
successes. This is what you're going to start to really care about, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? Because you want to think of it. One success to every what? Non-successes. 1.25 non-successes. Does anybody ever watch the movie Dumb and Dumber? It's one of my favorite movies. I know it sounds horrible. You say Dumb and Dumber, yeah. You guys know, you guys remember, oh, what's his name, Lloyd Christmas? He was after um, who? What was her name in the movie? Lloyd Christmas? She, he was chasing who? What was her name? Forgot. Forgot? God. Her name was Holly Robinson for and Mary Swanson. And remember at the end of the movie, he starts to ask her, "Hey, so what are our ch what what are our chances?" And what did she say? One in a million. She's actually talking about odds, 1 to 1 million. One success to a million failures. What did he say? So there's a chance. So there's a chance. And that's the funny part. He's actually right. Because there's one success to every million failures. She gave him the odds because he asked her. He didn't say, what's the probability? He said, so what are the odds? One, two, one million. This is what we're saying. One success to every 1.25 failures, non-successes. Let's get rid of that and call it what it is. One success to what? 1.25 failures. And that's how I think of odds. I think of, you know, Lloyd Christmas and Mary what? Mary Swanson. And that's funny because he's, she, she you know, it, the, if you guys don't know, What's the definition of, of, of what? Of humor. One definition of it is irony. <coughs> so the reason it's funny is because it's ironic. One success is a chance to a million failures, but she was trying to be nice and tell him there is no what? Chance. Exactly. So you're telling me there's a chance. All right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you guys tomorrow. We'll continue with the odds, and now have a great day. I'm going to update your homework.